Finding out what's happening in Sudan's conflict-stricken areas is difficult. Even more so when there's a lack of internet connectivity, fear of attacks and warring narratives. In this video, we're going to look at how satellite imagery can be used to get an indication of what is happening in some of the most war-affected areas in Sudan since April 2023. The main focus we're going to look at is finding Sudan's destroyed towns. Hi everyone, I'm really honoured to share this session with you today as Sudan has been a place that's been close to my heart for several years now. But before we start, just a couple of quick things. First, please take care of your mental health, especially when working on content like this, as some of the subjects can be very traumatic at times. Second, please head over to my YouTube channel and check out some of the sessions where we go a little bit deeper into some of the tools and techniques that we cover in this session today so that you can learn a little bit more about using things like Google Earth or searching for content online. And that way it helps you connect the digital dots a little bit better so you can answer questions like where did it happen, when did it happen and what happened a little bit easier. Well, Monday marks one year since the eruption of the civil war in Sudan. Fighting broke out in the morning, gunfire was heard across Khartoum. In Sudan, more people have been displaced. It's filmed by those who bragged about it. Sudan has been embroiled in conflict for decades. Despite numerous pauses, agreements and calm periods, violence has persisted, leading to the destruction of entire towns, communities and lives. Today we're going to use Google Earth to see the extent of this damage from a satellite perspective. We're going to start by opening Google Earth Pro. That's the desktop version. You can find a link to it in the description below. I'm going to walk you through how to access historical data so that you can compare satellite imagery from different windows of time. This is a very powerful way to visually document change over time. Now let's zoom in on a specific town in Sudan's Darfur region that has reportedly suffered a number of human rights abuses and wide levels of destruction since the fighting increased in April 15, 2023. We're going to focus on the town of El Janina, which in 2022 reportedly had a population of more than 500,000 people, many of which are internally displaced people due to conflict in the region. We can see a very clear satellite image and if we wanted to find the date of the image, we can check out the status at the bottom. If you don't have that status, you can click on view in the top of your Google Earth browser and click status bar to bring that up. We also have the historical slider at the top and that gives an indication of the date that we might be looking at being April 2023. However, I have personally found that the date range in the slider isn't necessarily as reliable as what the one that would be in the status bar down the bottom. You can see the status bar says April 19, 2023. The date bar at the top says April 30, 2023. If we wanna check the source of the image, first of all, we can see it's from Airbus satellite imagery. That's copyrighted and displayed down here. We can see that if we pop this over the trees here, and you can see that Airbus clearly labeled there. Airbus is a commercial satellite provider. I don't have an account with Airbus, but what I can do is use a third party provider like Apollo mapping and have a look at the available imagery from Airbus for April 19, 2023. Just to double check that that's the exact image that we're looking at. We can use this website and use the search image hunter now function which basically allows you to purchase commercial satellite imagery from providers like Planet, Maxar, and Airbus. I'm going to search for the place, El Janina in Sudan. I can filter my results looking for Airbus imagery, and then we'll go back to April 2023, and we can see that there are two images from April 19. We can even load those images you can see that there is one over here. That's probably not the one we're looking at because we're looking at the city 
in the middle of El Janina. So we might be looking at this one. That's the image from April 19. And if we click the information icon, we can see the exact time that that satellite image was taken and the exact date. And that's our April 19 image. So we can verify that indeed it's not April 30, but it's April 19, 2023 is the current image that we're looking at. If you're looking at this town on Google Earth during this tutorial, you'll probably see that the town has suffered fighting, attacks and destruction in the past prior to April 2023. Unfortunately, the satellite imagery of El Janina paints a very sad story. The town also has updated data for 2024. And looking at the west of the town, we can see imagery from March 17, 2024. By looking at this most recent satellite image, we can see that the level of destruction is significant. Buildings have vanished and the landscape has dramatically changed. For a comparison of those two satellite images, we can see that the satellite tiles have been clearly distinguished between these two areas here. We can see where one side has been updated and one side is still serving the satellite image from March 2000 or April 2023. And this distinct line allows us to see the difference where complete destruction has occurred within at least the western side of that town. By also clicking on before and after, we can see the change over time and really be able to visualize that difference between what the imagery looked like in April 19, 2023 and what it looks like in March 17, 2024. To really see that level of destruction of, these area, of this area. As you can imagine, using OSINT tools like this doesn't only help us understand the scale of the destruction, but also brings global attention to the crises that otherwise might go unnoticed. The significance of the Google Earth imagery allows us to tell what has happened on the ground, or at the very least give a strong indication of what has happened. In some areas where we look at numerous buildings that have been built around marketplaces or areas like this, we can scroll forward and see that they've been completely demolished. We can see some of these buildings and even the walls around them and the structures that hold these tin roofs have just been completely cleared from the satellite imagery. By zooming out, we can see a level of detail that is unmatched to any video or photo from the ground. Gathering this kind of information is extremely important as internet connectivity has been limited in these regions due to a number of factors such as power supply, fuel for generators, phone tower limitations, and obviously that human element of intimidation and fear of repercussions should anyone upload footage of who might be responsible for this. The absence of internet connectivity has been detected by monitoring groups such as NetBlocks, for example, who have repeatedly identified where major network connectivity drops in Sudan since 2023, and specifically where major phone providers as well have lost connectivity. Despite these internet connectivity issues, sometimes footage does come out, and it has. For example, we've seen footage come out during fighting, such as in the center of town, where we see this militia fighter cheering in front of the video while vehicles burn in the background. Of course, it's important to verify this information and accurately geolocate footage like this so that we know that it was actually filmed in the town. A quick indication by pausing at frames like this and this indicates that we are looking at a substantial structure that might be in blue with trees on the street. We're also on a paved road and there aren't too many paved roads in El Janina, especially wide ones. By looking around at certain buildings we can see that some of them have a blue roof but also we see that there are trees on the road and we also see that there's a kind of drain like object right here and a driveway that goes into this area and a building that appears to be on a bit of an angle towards the road. By looking around at some different areas, we can almost position ourselves to be looking at the exact same area or the exact same angle of view that might be seen in the footage 
For example, we can successfully identify that this footage was filmed from an angle similar to this. We can see the building that's on a lean, we can see the tree right here, and then if we move across, we can see also this entry. We can even go back in time to see the front of this building and what it might have looked like in the past. And we can see clearly that little street divider with these two little dividers right here. Notice the importance of the imagery from April 2023, where we can see a large collection of water or some kind of liquid on the road right here. And yet if we scroll back in other satellite images, we don't see that as present right there. That may be an indication that this vehicle that was on fire was also leaking something on the road or might have been uh, might have had water sprayed on it after this event we can also see some white on the road that may be charring and that looks like a very similar location to where that vehicle was actually burning right here while that was footage of during an event filmed by fighters we also have footage filmed from the ground of the aftermath of some fires that show the damage from the ground to these kinds of areas. This area specifically is believed to be a school area also in the center of the town. In this video we have a number of features that aren't necessarily indicative from the ground but if we think about these features from above then they make a clear object that we can start looking for on a satellite image. For example the shape of this building which looks like it has a chunk out of the middle of it and then other bits coming out towards here and at this side of the building and then we also have another building that faces it as well over here and we have a collection of water towers in between these two buildings as well. For the purpose of time I already geolocated this but we can have a look and see if this matches this location where we can see we have a building at the entrance of this compound and we can see that we have one right here. We can also see there are clear indications that there are trees right here which indicates that we have this tree. This is the view that we would be seeing right here with that small chunk taken out. Again we can scroll back in time and just try and get a more clear image of these buildings as well and see that one is a little bit in or a little bit different. If we follow the rest of the footage as it goes through, we can see the left wall of the compound over here, which would be this view. The person moves slowly towards this path up here. And then we're met with this view right here, where we see the small sets of water towers and then this long building in the background. Note that there is a tree that is in front of the view, in front of the water towers that we have here. So that's always important to do to verify that imagery and again that gives us a much larger scale of the video that from down in this area on the main road with the militia fighter and the vehicles on fire, this area of a school camp compound uh, with multiple uses that was completely burnt down and then we obviously have that satellite imagery over here which just shows that high level of destruction. Of course, there are so many other factors that we could look at as well. While this footage helps show the on-ground aspect and the Google Earth satellite imagery gives us the view from above, both can be supplemented through the use of other geospatial products available for free to anyone with an internet connection. For example, one that I've shown widely on my YouTube tutorials is Sentinel Hub, which is not as clear as Google Earth, but shows the smoke from fires and burn damage quite clearly, quite regularly. For example, if we go back in Sentinel Hub imagery, we can see some of the fires actively burning in this region on May 14. You can also note that when I slide through, we can see multiple other dates from May as well. For example, May 19, May 24, May 29 and others. Sentinel Hub is also extremely useful because we have other filters to really draw down that satellite imagery to identify, for example, a burn area index or even actually show some of the wires that are burning. And you can see some of those smaller areas with quite bright orange lights to identify what could be potentially active fires. Again, it's important that when you use these filters, uh, it's crucial to actually read the descriptions to make sure you accurately describe them as well. 
but that's an incredibly useful tool and allows us to identify what happened in between those Google Earth images, remembering that we only had satellite imagery from March 2023 and April 2024. Further to that, we also have NASA Firms, the Fire Information Resource Management System, which is also one that is featured on my tutorials, and that provides indications of heat signatures every single day anywhere on the Earth, and the times that they are identified as well. So if we have a look over El Janina, we can click on our timeline, and we can have a look at anything from one day to two days to ten, right up to almost a month or more than a month. Now I'm going to select this, I'm going to go back in time and let's have a look back last year at some of these things, for example, where we saw those fires on Sentinel Hub in May. So we'll go back to 2023 in May and we'll have a look at that imagery there. And you can see those heat signatures as little red dots. Of course, each one of these should be verified to see if they actually are fires or other types of heat signatures. And when you double click on these, you can actually see the time that they were identified as well. And it also gives that easy latitude and longitude that you can follow up with satellite imagery. So this is a very useful tool to again, fill the gaps between the satellite imagery that we only had through Google Earth to find out exactly when some of the fires were burning within this area. While this information is obviously extremely helpful data to use, especially where there is a lack of footage and warring narratives, it doesn't replace the importance of the human stories that come from those who have survived what has happened in places like El Janina, but rather it strengthens them and gives weight to their testimony. The impact on civilians cannot be overstated and millions have been displaced internally or in neighbouring countries with homes destroyed and lives upended. Documentation like this is crucial for humanitarian agencies and international bodies to respond effectively. And there's multiple ways that this content can be visualised. One of the ways that this information can be documented is, for example, the mapping that the Sudan Witness Project of the Centre for Information Resilience is doing by using very similar techniques to what we've just shown in this YouTube video to repetitively identify where there have been villages destroyed through the use of fire. You can see this map, which is publicly available, so it's free to use for anyone with an internet connection. And you can scroll into certain areas, for example, around El Janina or other places, and have a look at where some of those fires have been burning. You can turn on the satellite imagery to zoom into some of these locations and have a look at where some of those heat signatures have been picked up and where it has been identified and verified using satellite imagery as well. This kind of work is completely crucial to not only identifying when fires have happened, where villages have been destroyed and how many, but also showing the complete scale of just how many villages have been destroyed using fire since April 2023. This provides important statistics and information to keep research active on what's happening in Sudan, but also to give weight to testimony of those who may have fled some of these villages. You can find a link to this map in the description below. If you're interested in learning more about how open source information can be used to document things such as the destruction of villages within Sudan and communities and lives. I'll link to the resources, some of the organizations and some of the individuals doing incredible work on what's happening in Sudan at the moment in the description below. It's important to remember that as a community, we use these tools available to us to shine a light on these issues. Open source information provides us with a way to bear witness from afar and advocate for those who need it most. Thank you so much for watching and please share this video to help spread that word. Drop your questions or insights in the comment section below. I look forward to reading them and until next time, keep digging into the data and keep looking for the information that's so crucial to help what's happening in the world.